and my name is Jem Schofield, and welcome to this Adorama event that is all about the Scrim Gym Cine system from Westcott. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on here in this space, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing today that I have never done. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the lay of the land. But before I do that, just a little bit of housekeeping. Number one, we have a chat here on Vimeo, and I have that up here. So if anybody who is watching this can just let me know that they can hear and see me, that would be awesome. And also just know that there's a little bit of latency. There's a little bit of a delay here when I'm presenting. And then what you see kind of shows up on Vimeo. So I'm taking that into account as I look at the chat here. But if you can just let me know that you can see and hear me, then we can really start to jump into this. And I can go over what we're going to be doing over the next hour to hour and a half for this event. So if you can just uh, pop in there. Somebody who's here in the chat. I see Joe was here. Everything is good. Thank you. Awesome. I have confirmation. So um, spring has suddenly decided to show up here in Oregon this Friday. It's been a long time coming. Beautiful outside. So I'm in a good mood. And as long as connections and everything stay the way they should, which I'm pretty confident they will, then uh, we should be okay. Three refreshes, but now... We're good. Okay. People are showing up. They're seeing the stream and I'm giving it a couple of minutes here so we can just sort of ramp up. And again, just sort of housekeeping wise, so you can get a sense of what today is going to be all about. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of a small to no crew kind of person when it comes to education. And today is no, no exception. It's just me here in this space. So I'll be doing everything in terms of switching and all kinds of other things that are going on here. And this will be recorded for viewing later. Uh, so for everybody who's here, like Steve, in the live stream, thank you for coming. There's also some links below the chat on Vimeo to the products that I'll be talking about. And again, when I'm anchored here at the desk, I'll come over and take a look at questions, but we will have some time at the end of the workshop to answer additional questions based on what I've gone over. So some things that you should know, I have a switcher here. There's going to be essentially four camera angles that you'll be looking at. Uh, this will obviously be the tabletop one here, and that's the remote I'll be using. I'll talk about that in a second. This is the wider shot, so you can take a look at the space when I'm doing things for the live demo. And then we have a fourth camera, which is essentially a hero camera, which is the end result of what we're doing when we're using the Scrim Gym Cine lighting control system. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that I'll be doing is I'll be turning lights on and off. So just uh, for instance here, I've got a light, which is my key over here, which is just bouncing into a, a white wall, and I can turn that off. So I'll be doing that quite a lot. I have a second light that's to my right, which I will be turning on along with that first light. I'll look a little overexposed when I do that, but that's really for this shot here. So you'll see that the event space now, or workshop space, I don't know what we call this thing, is now a little bit brighter when I have those two lights on and you should be able to see everything pretty clearly. Um, I also... When I'm sitting in this position, which is in the hero chair position, I do actually have a switcher here. Uh, I don't know, even know how it's working, to be honest with you. And that'll switch over to the hero shot or any of the other shots that I have that I want to show you. So that's kind of how this is going to go. Let's go ahead and turn off uh, this light over here and we can get back to this. And again, the Q&A is up here. And I'm going to jump right into a little keynote. It'll kind of tell you a little bit about myself, uh, what we're going to be doing today. There's some stuff in there to talk about Scrim Jim Cine. And again, Q&A is always open. So if you have a question, just throw it up there and I'll scroll through them. So here we go. 
boom. Um, I have a company. It's called the C47. And we do video production, uh, filmmaking, consulting, and education. I believe there may be a slide right before this that you need to see. There's my name. I'm a producer, director, DP, and educator. And uh, yeah, that's basically, you know, I do a bunch of stuff. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the work that I've done in the past. That's a course on lighting for LinkedIn Learning. This is a talking head, a mini documentary. I really like working on those. Um, just a variety of stuff. Most of the projects that I work on are either in the corporate realm or have to do with education. I do get to work on the occasional music video here and there. And for sure, Westcott's products come into play with a lot of the work that I do. I also get to do fun projects like this one, which was for Road Micro, a film contest that they had that they do annually. And it was a real treat to be able to work with Billy Bob Thornton. And, uh, you know, those are the, the ones that are really fun. I got to DP that and also direct it. Though when you're working with Billy Bob Thornton, <laughs> he's kind of directing as well. And he's a great director. Um, so, yeah, there's some stuff related to that. And that's kind of what I do. I help create content. So my wheelhouse really is in creating educational content. And for that, I'll just go ahead and show you some more stuff. I've done these courses for LinkedIn Learning. And I'm just seeing if I have to scroll down on the chat here. Nope, no more questions or questions yet. Uh, but if you are going to ask a question, it would be great if you just say, hey, Jem, and then ask the question or something like that, or at the C47, which is my company. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So LinkedIn Learning, I've done a lot of education for Canon on both their DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, and also their Cine products. And I've got a website, which is the C47.com, but this is my YouTube channel. I create content generally weekly. Most of the stuff I do at this point in time are live streams. And uh, there's the YouTube channel. And there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you an overview of the session or the workshop agenda. We're going to go ahead and take a look at Scrim Jim Cine in action, sort of out in the field, behind the scenes footage, uh, not footage, but shots, stills. Then I'll do an overview of the Scrim Jim Cine system. That'll both be slide based, and I'll also go ahead and show you that stuff live. So we'll talk about the system and the kits, and then I'll show you how everything goes uh, and is put together. And then there'll be a live demo. And then at the end, there'll be a Q&A. So that's kind of how we're going to run it. And again, for this right now, if you are watching live and not on the replay, if you have questions as I go through this, please post them and I'll be checking that consistently. All right, so here we go. Uh, in action, just to kind of get a sense of what Scrim Gym Cine is. First of all, I call it an analog system, right? You're using it with lights and things that get plugged in and that have cables, but Scrim Gym Cine is not that. It is a frame-based system that has modifiers, fabrics, all kinds of things. It's sort of a giant erector set that allows you to build lighting control and ways to mount lights and to diffuse and bounce and block and all of that fun stuff. And we can see here the lights being used in various different applications. I believe this is Westcott's studio space that they have in Ohio, which is a space that I've taught in and also done videos in. Uh, another example here, really more butterfly style lighting and obviously pushing a light through that silk. And then here in another video style where we're basically just taking those flex lights and they're being mounted to, um, to Scrim Jim Cine as the frames. And then I was fortunate enough and I have a very long history with Westcott to help work with them on Scrim Jim Cine. So prior to Scrim Jim Cine, which has now been out for a very long time, there was a product called Scrim Jim, which is still available. Uh, also a lighting control system. 
but a little bit different. Frames were not as beefy. Uh, they still had great fabrics to be used, and they were used in and still are used in a lot of uh, production, especially for still photographers. But um, this system is more modular. It's more flexible in terms of what you can do. And I was fortunate enough when I was really looking for tools to help filmmakers and people in video production to work directly with Westcott on Scrim Jim Cine. So there was other people. They were obviously developing internally and they were getting a lot of feedback from a lot of users. But I, I have a lot of prototypes that have come through here over the years. This is a book light kit, which we'll talk about how it works, but it's basically used most of the time for bouncing and diffusing. It's uh, two four foot by six foot frames that are put together and they give you a lot of flexibility. You can break them apart. This is a four by four. Sorry, I just tapped my mic there. Uh, four by four frame and you can see a reflector in the foreground and essentially just bouncing a light off of that frame all on one light stand over there in the background, which you can see. And then this is another four by four frame. It's part of a kit that I helped develop called the C47 DP kit or director of photography kit. And what's on there right now is something called a floppy cutter. If you're not familiar with it, it's a, a four by four piece of fabric that's black duvetine and then you can open it up to four by eight and in this configuration that you're seeing of me a long time ago sans beard uh, we have it in a configuration which is sometimes called a courtesy it's called a courtesy because when you're using it outside when somebody like talent needs to get the sun off of their head you can have them stand under there it's also used a lot on location so that it just take some of that ambient light away. So if you were, let's say, in a video village or somebody was looking at a monitor, you could use it that way. But it can be used in many other ways as well. And then here we have that four by six frame and it's broken out. You can also just buy a four by six frame in Scrim Jim Cine and we're using it for neg fill. So we've got plenty of light in that space. You can see where I'm standing there with the butt shot there and I've got natural light coming in to that brewery space and that light is hitting talent, but I just want to go ahead and cut a little bit of that light on the left side of talent, uh, using a four by four frame here, just with a half grid cloth. So just pushing some light through there and there's a nice light there in the foreground as well. And then here, two C-stands with clamps and uh, another C-stand with a one by two flex light just being pushed through that frame. We're using Scrim Jim Cine for both of those things. So the flex light is attached to a one by two frame. Uh, and then we also have the four by six frame, which is being used to push uh, you know, for the light to be pushed through. And then that becomes our source. So we get really nice, beautiful, large source. And then in the background there, you'll see that there's a kicker light too. And then here again, a uh, totally different setup, but very similar just in terms of location, a different setup. And again, butterfly style lighting. And, and then now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Scrim Jim Cine being used in exterior locations. You could, use scrim gym the previous system outside but this is just a beefier positive locking system that i think is better suited for both interior and exterior locations and you can see here that scrim gym cine is not just for video not just for stills it's being used across the boards for both of those things in production here we have a small frame that's being used with a little silver bounce and you can see how that's being used and so now we're going to basically go over uh the system and what it comprise it's comprised of and again if you have any questions just throw them into the chat here as we go through things so overview of the system we have the scrim gym cine framework this is basically the tubes and the connectors and the things that you put this entire erector set together with and we'll take a look at those live as well. But you can see that the frame sets come in different configurations. The tubes come in different sizes. 
And they're very well thought out very specifically in terms of being able to create frames of certain sizes. So you'll see that the tubes, for instance, they have 22 inch tubes or 34 inch tubes, which may seem odd, but once you start using straight and corner connectors, that's how you get to, for instance, um, you know, a two by two or a four by four so that they measure out exactly to those sizes. So hopefully that makes sense. You've got a ton of fabrics and you can even see under the reflective fa fabrics that we're only seeing one of them there, but there are four variations of those. And you can see that for the black block, there's a uh, black on both sides, but then there's also an unbleached muslin and a black. And we'll be looking at that later on as well. Net fabrics, diffusion fabrics in, uh, in different strengths. And there's even a half grid cloth, which was one of my favorites. And there on the right hand side, you can see the floppy cutter fabric, which is a four by four, which opens up to a four by eight. And then you have kits and there are a lot of kits in the Scrim Jim Cine family. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to help develop two of those, the C47 Scrim Jim Cine book light kit and the DP kit, but there's also just the straight Scrim Jim Cine kit and also the video kit which is uh, very similar, but has more fabrics and is a little more flexible in terms of that. And then hardware, additional hardware besides the connectors. So you have things like grip heads and uh, the Scrim Jim Cine clamp, which we'll be using today for a setup. And that's basically the overview. You can see different size frames that you can build. And the nice thing is that whether you buy a kit or you buy individual frames, it's completely modular. You can go ahead and expand upon these anytime you want, and you can build a bigger frame and then just get fabric or fabrics that suit your type of production. We touched on the kits. We've got the Scrim Jim Cine kit comes in sizes starting at four by four all the way up to eight by eight. And you can see that kit and the fabrics it comes with. We've got the Scrim Jim video kit, uh, starts at a four by six size all the way up to an eight by eight. And you can see that kit and the additional fabrics that that comes with the DP kit, which is a four by four frame. And it all fits inside of this small bag with the tubes, with the fabrics, with the connectors. And the idea is that you can travel anywhere with this kit and you have a floppy cutter, you have silver white, you have a half grid cloth. Um, actually, I think it may be a one stop uh, standardly in here, but it's uh, it's a big kit. And then you've got the book light kit, which is the uh, the big one, which comes with tons of different fabrics. You've got half grid cloth. You've got a one stop diffusion. You've got silver white, and then you have the unbleached muslin with black on the other side. So it's an incredibly flexible kit. And what's great about this kit for me is you can build other size frames from this. If you have the DP kit and you have the book light kit, you have so many things that you can do. And you don't have to use it as two frames that are attached to each other. You can break those frames apart and just have two four by six frames and you can use them individually. So you could do butterfly lighting or clamshell lighting, or you could, you know, do a butterfly lighting and then use, uh, you know, one of them for neg fill or whatever you want to do. There's lots of different options there. Um, just because I haven't seen anything else in the chat in a while, if somebody could just post and say, hey, we're still here, uh, Julian, Steve, Joe, somebody else, uh, that would be awesome. And there you go. So that's kind of the overview of what the system is. And now we're going to take a look at some of these parts here and see how they go together and how they work together. And this might be a time where, you know, you have a question. Again, please just let me know that the stream is coming through. It says everything is fine here. Uh, I'm assuming that it is. It says we're live and that you can see it. Boom, still here. Perfect. Garrett, Rick, uh, Steve, awesome. It's great to get that confirmation. And please don't hold back on questions because very shortly I'm going to be moving around the space and it's going to be harder for me to answer questions. Of course, I'll come back after that's all happened and I can answer additional questions if I need to, and we can go over those. Um, 
so good. So let's go ahead and take a look at a, a couple of things here. So first of all, the building blocks, right? We talked about the tubes here and the tubes are, are the things that are, you know, the basis of Scrim Jim Cine. So you've got a tube in, in a certain length, 10 inch, you know, 22 inch, 34 inch, whatever the length of the tube is. And as is true to Scrim Jim, uh, in general, we have Velcro on both sides to attach fabrics. There's a uh, three eighths tap here. So you can actually attach uh, things to those on your tubes. We'll take a look at an example of that. And then you'll see that there are holes on either end of these tubes. So what we can do is we take um, generally the two main building blocks of Scrim Jim Cine are corner connectors and straight connectors, right? So we're going to go ahead and take, and you can see here that the Velcro matches up on the connectors here. We'll take a connector and we'll press that down. And what's really nice about this is it's a positive locking system. So that's not going to go anywhere once that's in there. And we've got these one by one tubes. So they're beefy aluminum tubes and they can be used inside and outside. Thank you, Stephen, about the lighting comment. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of work <laughs> setting up this space this way. Um, we'll see we'll see how it goes as I start to move around and everything, but we're, we're giving it a shot here. And uh, there you go. So there's a straight connector. And then the corner connector is no different. You just basically line it up um, and then you basically connect it. So if I'm going to go ahead and create something here. I can just go ahead and take the connector. Sorry, I was in the wrong direction here. Boom, there's your corner connector for that. So the idea is you take a couple of these. These are one by ones uh, once we put the corners on here and we take a couple of straight connectors and you can see how these things get put together. Again, an erector set, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Boom. You know, we go in there and then I'm just going to go ahead and attach this. And you'll see, let me just go ahead and put, sorry guys, I just, uh, actually I'm going to do it the way I normally do it, which is, and this is why we're doing things live. You put this in here, create a little U shape. Okay. And then you take this last piece, which is already built. You put it into place here and we go ahead and pop that in. And you know, it's going to be loud here. I apologize for that and Bob's your uncle, right? So there you go. Now we've got a one by one frame here and we can do things with that. For instance, um, here's a flex light. We take this flex light right here and we can just attach it to the frame. So now we've got that on the frame and we can clamp this, we can set it up wherever we want. And then the modifiers. So we can take that one by one frame now and we can take a one by one silk, basically a, a full stop diffuser, and we can put that onto here. So that just attaches with Velcro. And you're gonna be hearing a lot of Velcro in this workshop. Or there are hard diffusers. So this is a hard diffuser. These are my, you know, my favorites probably. Um, the downside to the hard diffuser is for travel. When you start to get to larger sizes, like a one by two, then you can't roll that up. So the fabric-based ones are a good option for that. But you can see here that we have this nice little tight configuration using Scrim Jim Cine, and we have a modifier on here, and there you go. Oh, and here, look at this. A lot of stuff in this system, but we have grids. So you can put a grid on here, so that can open up. So you just basically attach, whoop, live television kids there you go so we've got a grid so you can build these out in lots of different ways and um, just so you know because it's good to take a look at this i have so many of these old frames and i would say old meaning since the beginning of scrim jim cine but the way these frames ship now there's uh this little piece attached to the three eighths, which will prevent it from spinning at all as well. So standardly, when you get your frames, in fact, um, here's a good example. When you order a kit from Westcott, uh, that's a full stop on that solid. Uh, you're talking about the, the silk, um, Julian. So that would be a, a full stop diffusion 
or do you mean on the uh, the hard diffuser? I don't, you know, I've never measured that, but it's looks like it's pretty similar to a, a one stop. So this is a um, the one by one kit, similar to what we just built out here. And when you're ordering these, whether it's a four by six or it's a four by four or an eight by eight, it's going to come packaged like this with all of the connectors and everything that you need. So if you're not buying one of the kit kits that come with fabrics and frames, then this is how it's going to come. And you'll see here, those are the updated three eighths taps on there. The old ones work great as well. It's just another, another step in making life easier for you. Um, that's a good question, Julian. I don't know, but that information should be on Westcott's website. You know, modifiers are a little funny. Um, for instance, there's a fabric in this system here, which is a half, uh, it's called a half grid cloth. It's not a half stop grid cloth. It's just called half grid cloth. And that's pretty typical in this industry. Um, you say, you know, a modifier, but then there are ones that are rated. So there might be a one stop that hard diffuser. I would just check Westcott's website and see if they have a rating on that. Um, but looks to me based on what I'm seeing, it's a, probably going to cut light by about a stop or so. Um, and it just softens stuff out and makes it glow. And when you're using flex lights, which have multiple LEDs, it just, you know, creates a, a nice soft light over there. So you've got those straight connectors, you've got those corner connectors, and then um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of other things. One of the things that I think um, was a pretty big deal when Scrim Jim Cine was built, and it's really kind of the basis of the book light kit, is this swing hinge. And uh, just to show you how long I've been working with Westcott, this is the original swing hinge prototype that we tested with the original scrim gym system to see if it would work and we used three of these i have the other two over here to my right on their frames to make sure that the concept would work but they they stop so they open up the frame and they stop and the difference here with the swing hinge for scrim gym cine is that it can go in any direction. So there's tremendous flexibility here with the swing hinge. Let's take that a step further. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what is essentially behind me here with that book light that you see over my right shoulder, where those two lights are uh, in the frame. And this is just a, a little one that I built here out of a couple of frames. And that's that swing hinge on the bottom, right? So what you can do is it can go in either direction and it gives you a lot of flexibility when you buy the book light there's two swing hinges in there but there's also just straight corner connectors so if you wanted to break this apart and just have two four by six frames you could do it when you buy the book light if you don't want to just uh, put sandbags right here on the frames there's a book light um, essentially foot kit i guess or feet uh, you get two of these, and what you can do is you can attach these either going on the inside. Uh, let's see if I can make that a little bit easier for you to see. Over here, boom, switching over. So you get the, the kit here for the feet, and what you can do is you can attach that either going towards the outside of the frame or the inside of the frame. And when you open this up, it will create stability. and another great place to put a sandbag or sometimes called dirt as we call it in the quote unquote industry. So I'm going to put that down there. Uh, again, I'm looking at the chat here. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and then there's some other cool things. We're going to take a look at this when we do the live demonstration. But if I just take a couple of these 22 inch tubes and I use a two inch connector here, what we can do is put these together and you don't always have to use Scrim Jim Cine as a complete frame. Um, you know, because the whole system is based on this Velcro attachment for all of your fabrics, and you have that on both sides, you could just take this and essentially create a T-bar. Um, so if you just want to clamp this to a C-stand or to a light stand, and then put a fabric on here and just have it hang down, 
you can absolutely do that. Generally would only do that in interior locations. You could do it outdoors if it was a, you know, quiet, not windy day, but there is a lot of flexibility there in terms of what you can do as well. Um, what else do I have for you kids to take a look at? Uh, well, the other thing that we'll take a look at there later on is this uh, Scrim Gym Cine Clamp. And this is designed specifically for the square shape of Scrim Gym Cine. So if you want to go ahead and just go right into a grip head, you have a 5 8 there stud. And then you can basically just loosen or, or tie that down. It's got a nice rubber down here on the bottom, rubber on the inside, so it's not messing up your frames. And it's a great piece of kit. Um, it is specific to Scrim Gym Cine, and if you have a bunch of Mathalini or Cardellini clamps, you could absolutely use those as well. You could use super clamps for some of this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, Mafers, those all work. Um, but I think it's a great little thing to have in the kit, especially if you're doing certain things like, let's say you have the DP kit, pick up one of these. It's great to mount with that. Uh, and we'll, we'll use that later on as well. And then, well, you know, the three eighths tap, this is a kind of cool thing that I wanted to show people. I was just messing around yesterday and wanted to show a visual of what you could possibly do. Uh, we've got this little arm here. Basically, it's a stud, right? So we've got a uh, 3 8 to quarter 20 stud here. I'm not using the quarter 20 on this side. I'm using this more like a, a baby pin. And, and then I'm attaching this little articulating arm here, and then I'm going into an ice light, right? So what we basically have is then a 1 by 2 scrim gym. And look, this would be on the top probably of what we're talking about. And then we've got this hard diffuser here. This is just one setup. And you can now see that you can easily either walk with this, and this has a grid on it, but uh, I can take that off. It's just going to be loud, but why not? Let's do it. And this is down on the lowest setting right now for the ice light. Uh, and you can actually get uh, something to go over here too to change this to tungsten uh, or 3200 but you can see here that we can increase the intensity of this thing and this sucker can get pretty bright so pretty cool but that's a uh, just an example of how you could use those 3 8 taps to do some interesting things this would be a great easy way to do a walk and talk or something like that where you needed some light and you wanted it to be consistent but you wanted it to be easy for the person to uh, operate with. So there you go. So we're going to put that sucker down. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good overview of how the system works as an erector set to build certain things. And I just want to know if there's any questions that anybody has right now based on what I've shown up until this point because then we'll get into kind of getting into the space and um, looking at a couple of setups and well, we'll look at one particular setup, but we'll kind of build it out in terms of what we're doing. So any other questions that we have in the chat before I start to go into this space here and, and go into some other stuff? Yes, no, maybe? All right, I'll take that as a no for now. Uh, take a sip of water and then we're gonna get out into this space over here. I'll come back every, I don't know, five minutes or so and check the chat just in case a question comes up from the actual uh, stuff that I'm doing here. But this is where we start to get into turning on more lights and not tripping over things, hopefully. Um, Lex, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I had never used that setup for the ice light until I started putting that together yesterday. I was like, you know, that could work. And I just started to put things together. And again, that's the whole thing with Scrim Jim Cine. It's this erector set. You just think about something in terms of a modifier for your lighting, whether it's stills or video, and you start to build things. And the more parts you have from the system, the more flexibility you have to do certain things. So I appreciate that comment. And uh, again, if you have questions, just let me know. 
and uh, hopefully I won't trip over some of these frames. I'll move some of that stuff around. So let's go ahead and um, turn this other light in, Little this other light on, a little bit overexposed here. I'm gonna move this uh, here. And as I start to move around, please also let me know that everything is working, um, you know, that you can hear me and that everything's okay uh, from, from that standpoint. So this is the space that we're gonna be playing in now for a little while uh let me go ahead and switch over to this view so now now i can say that that's that camera over there and i'll try to refer to it as much as i can um concrete floor a um, little bit of control in terms of the lighting here and uh what we'll do is we will strike these two lights at a certain point in time in fact let me sit in the hero shot over here and switch over to our fourth camera. Hopefully that's working. Looks like it did. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is uh, building out a frame based on this. So you can see I'm pretty much in silhouette. Uh, we've still got the background lighting on. I'll just leave that on for the workshop. And what we're gonna do is uh is build out what this looks like and if you're curious about equipment and things like that uh it's just a basically a a c200 over here that i'm using and that has uh just a standard 17 to 55 i'm shooting at a 28 uh the 1250 iso and uh, nothing too spectacular about that. I think that's a pretty typical, we'd be shooting somewhere between 400 and uh, 1600, sometimes on these newer cameras up to 3200 ISO, but uh, 1250 on this one today, the 2.8, which is uh, pretty typical when we're shooting interviews now and doing stuff that's video based. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna be doing here. I'll switch back over to the wide view um fixture wise i mean you know when we're using these modifiers if i was doing stuff that was uh, still photography based i might be using something like this the fj 400 uh the 200 we could use off camera uh flash as well some great uh products from westcott like the 80 that you could use very very uh flexible with lots of different camera systems and i will be leaving frames sometimes so that's okay uh, this is the Solix light, which I'll be using today as well. We could very easily use this light to uh, bounce and, uh, you know, go into something like this book light over here. It is color tunable. It's very cost effective and um, it gets pretty bright overall, but you can essentially go from a, a warm to a cool daylight color temperature. It comes with barn doors it's a magnetic system, which is pretty cool. Um, I'll just show you, even though we're talking about Scrim Jim Cine, you might as well take a quick peek at it. I'm making this up as I go along, kids. So there you go. Uh, so it's pretty cool because everything's magnetic on this system. So you got the barn doors here, you've got the diffuser, and now you can see the individual uh, LEDs. Where's my little remote that I have here? I'll turn this off on this side. So that's a little cleaner. Boom, there you go. So you can see there's the light uh, with the individual LEDs and then this magnetic system that basically allows you to just magnetize all of these uh, modifiers that go on here. And then it's uh, pretty simple. There's a, a you know cable here that goes on here, which is uh, threaded, so it's positive. And then you basically long hold to turn on or off and then short presses in here uh, to switch between intensity and color temperature. So that's the um, the Solix light. We'll put that off to the side. Uh, I will have one of those in play today. I'm probably not going to bounce it off a of Scrim Jim Cine, but it's there. Um, in fact, it's right here. Oh, you can't see me. There you go. I screwed that one up. Let's switch over to cam three. Boom. And I'm still surprised this stuff's all working, to be honest with you. How do, how do we get into this mess? Boom, there we go. All right, so there's another Solix light right there. 
Um, I have right now on a scrim gym cine frame over here. This is a flex one by two. This is a bicolor light. Love this light. Um, I don't have any diffusion on it because that's what this is going to do. The book light. And this is, uh, again, two four by six frames that have uh, the book light feet on them, that kit, and then the swing hinges there so I can open and close it. And then fabric wise, we've got unbleached muslin here, uh, but it does come with a silver white modifier too. So we could put silver on this side or we could put white on this side. There is black duvetine on this side, which is great. And then on this side, you could have a one-stop diffuser similar to what I was showing you before with the, with the stuff at the table. Uh, this is half grid cloth, which is one of my favorites. I love half grid cloth because it directs the light a little bit. I like the way that the light um, just modifies with, uh, with grid cloth. So there you go. So that's kind of the setup over there that we're going to be using for our key light. And the idea is that we're going to go ahead and light this space right here. We've got... This is the background. I'm pretty close to the background. That's uh, another reason I'm shooting at a 2.8 here. But let's go ahead and build this out and make it a little bit noisy in here so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to place this over here. And we're going to turn this around. It's going to get a little scrapey. So you can see how this swing hinge works on a bigger modifier than what I just had at the desk. You can see here, it can open up all the way. You could just have two of the same fabrics and just have a, a giant modifier here if you needed to as well. Put half grid cloth on both sides or a full stop diffuser on both sides or white or silver on both sides and then push light into that and you can do a lot of stuff with that as well. Uh, but again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this around. I'll do that right now, hold on. And just conceptually, what we're doing is we are going to bounce light into the unbleached muslin. And then we are going to let that bounce light go into this half grid cloth. So we're bouncing and diffusing light. That's just going to create a really, really soft source. Um, let's see. How heavy are the tubes for hand holding? Very, very lightweight, by the way. I'm just I'm coming over for some questions. I apologize. I'm going to come back to that. And then Magda says, which one, um, the one with the barn doors, it's called the Solix, S-O-L-I-X. Uh, I don't know if there's a link to it here on Vimeo, but if you go to Adorama's website and you just look up Solix, the bicolor version, uh, that's the one that I'm using here today. All right, awesome. Come back for more questions if they come up. Um, so we've got this book light. And what we're going to do is I'm now going to turn it around and essentially set it up in a side key configuration. So what we want is we want that bounced and then diffuse light to become our key source and come onto talent right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this up somewhere around here-ish. And you can see me disappear. So there it is. Um, and this, again, the half grid cloth is going to become our key source. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that um, flex light, the one by two. And again, I'm going to disappear for a second. And I'm going to put it behind the book light. And I'm going to push it into the unbleached muslin area. Okay, so it's going to basically be on an angle. It's pushing towards the unbleached muslin side over here. And then it's going to come back through this other side. So what we should probably do is turn off the house lights. Uh, wait, hold on. And before I did it, let me see. Uh, okay, so Magda, uh, this Adorama host is just putting the link into there. So we're going to just going to turn off these house lights. I'm going to go sit down in the hero shot. Uh, well, I'm going to go turn on the light first and then sit down in the hero shot. So we'll we'll figure this whole thing out. Magic of television, quote unquote. So we've got this here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off the house lights. So let's go ahead and do that. 
There's one. There's hopefully two. Oh, there we go. Other channel. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and strike this. And you can see the glow of that light now. And then what I'll do is I'll sit down here and we'll take a look at the, the basic frame of what we have. So I have to switch over to my hero camera. Boom. And you should be seeing that. Um, and, and again, as I was saying before, we're essentially side keying, right? Or pretty close. I mean, I really could swing this over just a little bit more to be perfectly side keyed. And it's not perfectly side keyed. And that's why you're seeing a little bit of light fall on this side here, but it's pretty much a split down the middle, right? So the nice thing about side keying is you don't generally get that weird triangular shaped um, shadow on the other side of the face. Um, but you can do variations of that in terms of what it looks like. And right now we're kind of side keying here. So we can see what the start of this frame could look like. Uh, we've got more work to do here, and you know this is just one variation to give you a sense of the Scrim Jim Cine system. But if I was sitting here in an interview, and you wanted it to be a little moodier, I guess you could do that. Um, there's other things you could do as well, which have nothing to do with Scrim Jim Cine. For instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and strike this light right now, and I'm going to go over and show you what would happen if I just turn on the Solix light. Right, so I'm going to go over here. Uh, long press on the Solix. Uh, I'm just going to position it so it's towards talent. And we'll get that turned on. There we go. And let's strike the one by 2 flex going into the book light. And, you know, you want to tweak a little bit. This, By the way, this is at 1%. Um, so once I switch over to the hero camera again, you can see here, I might want to back that light off a little bit or flag it a little bit more. But if I was doing an interview with somebody, instead of doing the, you know, blurry or pixelated thing, you could just backlight them and put them in silhouette. Uh, you may, depending on the brightness of your monitor, be able to make out my face. So I would tweak this just ever so slightly, but it gives you a sense of just another way that you can use these products. Uh, there we go. So back to the wide again. We're going to go ahead and strike the uh, book light. Here we go. And, uh, oh, well, we might as well look at it with the with the kicker in there. We could turn it off if we need to, or we could add it later again. But here it is with that little kick light, the Solix. So it's just doing a little something over here. Um, if If that's the mood that you wanted to go with, you could go with that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring some fill in there because you're going to have a corporate client and they're like, eh, I want to see the person's face all the way. Or, eh, you know, I'm always, always fighting with that a little bit of how far we have to go with all of that stuff. But let me go ahead and turn on some house lights again and we can build this sucker out. Hopefully people are learning some stuff here. Um, I'm having a good time doing it this way. So house lights back on. Just checking over here to see if there's wait any questions at all that have come up. Uh, nope, just that last one with the link to Solix. And here we go. Uh, back to the room. It's working, everybody. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually shocked that it's working. Um, I mean, you know, kind of. All right, so let's see. Uh, we'll get a, a C stand here. And the idea is to uh, basically take the light that's coming off of this book light here and we'll return it with uh, fill. So not setting up another light, just another modifier. And what I have here is with the uh, Scrim Jim Cine clamp attached to it, which we looked at a little bit earlier. I have the silver and then the white over here on a four by four frame. This particular frame is not from the DP kit. It's literally um, just four tubes with four corner connectors. And um, you know, that's challenging sometimes depending on where you're traveling or what you're doing. But if it's just in studio uh, or you're loading stuff into a car, then you could absolutely do that. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach that here to 
this C stand, uh, and then we're going to, we're going to bounce a light onto talent. Um, so we can get a little bit of a fill. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, not exactly. Wouldn't do this with, uh, talent in the chair and I'll get dirt on there in a second, but let me just open up that grip head a little bit more. And here we go. And even though they're beefy, they're pretty lightweight, so they can definitely be, especially in a four by four size, managed by one person. And we'll take a look. It's gonna be somewhere around there. Let's see, always over a leg. And we'll righty tighty that sucker. And I'm just gonna switch back to my hero shot. Make sure that modifier is not in the frame. Great. And then the last thing I wanna do is I wanna put some dirt on here. So I've got a sandbag. And uh, we're gonna turn stuff off and see what this looks like. And if we're getting enough of a return, I think I see a question. Let me sneak over here. Uh, oh, thanks, Julian, I appreciate that. All right, so going back over here, let's kill these uh, house lights while I'm standing over here right now. Boom and boom. Again, it's it's working. I'm excited. Um, there we go. So sitting here, and we will switch over to the hero cam. And there you go. So now we're getting this over here. I could adjust it a little bit, depending on the shape of somebody's face and how deep their eye sockets are, how large or small their nose is, how round their face is, how oval, oval their face is you're going to make adjustments to this stuff. It's not all going to be the same for every single person when you're lighting this way. But what's beautiful about the book light is it allows you to have this big, nice wrapped source that'll work for virtually anybody. Um, so, you know, we could dial the intensity up or down here a little bit and tweak it based on the look and feel. Uh, the monitor I'm looking at right over here, which is just a reference monitor for me, tends to be quite bright. So I'm seeing a lot of into the shadows and stuff, depending on what's coming across Vimeo and things, you may be seeing more or less of that. Um, but for me, in terms of ratios right now, it's not horrible. We're getting something that works. And what I also like about um, large sources, besides the fact that they're wrapped and they're soft, is that when somebody catches light in a large source, it feels more like it's coming from a window, right? I'm wearing glasses. I do have anti-reflective on them, but it feels like a bigger source. Um, obviously, the, the closer and the larger the source is, you know, the more wrapped and soft that light's going to be. If I move this, you know, a mile away, it'd just be a, point, a pointy little, you know, spotty light source. So, good. Uh, the problem I have right now with this frame for me personally is because I'm so close to the back of this sofa and this right here, what I'd like to do is slow this down a little bit. Slowing down means you're basically reducing the amount of light. So, um, pardon me, geez. Um, we're going to, we're going to slow this down a little bit and I have a way to do that, which I think will work. Um, and, there you go. So you could use the, the DP kit for this, or you could use um, what I'm going to do today, which is a little bit different, or a part of the DP kit or, or one of the frames. Uh, I'm essentially going to use one of these. So remember, I built this uh, four foot uh, or close to four feet. It would actually be exactly four feet if I put the corner connectors on here. This tube here, and I'm just going to walk this over so you can see what I have. Um, what we have here is the floppy cutter, but it's just on that bar, right? And then if I open this up, which I'll do when I go over there, it'll open up to a four by eight. And then you raise the light stand and you have a four foot wide by an eight foot tall. Let's just see. Are there any questions? Um, thank you, Lex, for that comment. I appreciate that. All right, here we go. So we've got this floppy cutter on just essentially a T bar or a single tube here. And that's just sitting, um, you know, what we'll do is we'll take one of the clamps and we'll attach it to the C stand. So right now it's just resting on there gingerly, as we like to say, or I like to say. And what I need is 
one of these suckers. So I'm going to use a scrim jim cine clamp. Uh, so we're going to go back to this, and that's how I'm going to attach it to the to the uh, C stand to the grip head. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that first. Again, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You know about that probably. If you don't, look it up. Uh, and then we're basically going to go ahead and just clamp this. So I have to make sure that the Velcro here is not on the second part of the floppy cutter. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there and uh, tighten it up. Maybe even from below, but this is fine. We're still righty tighty here. And this is now connected and over the largest of the legs here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to walk this over. Uh, let me move this for a second. I can always place this back. I want you to sort of get an idea of what I'm doing here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put that in the back in the opening of where the book light is. That's where the uh, one by two flex is. And I'm going to go ahead and put that floppy cutter there. I'm going to raise it up and drop it down. Um, what I should probably do is switch us to the hero shot. So right now I'm going to walk over there, but you're going to be looking at this shot. And uh, what you really want to do is you want to concentrate on this area right here and see what happens when I start to set that floppy cutter into place. Um, and I'll turn off the house lights when I'm doing that so you can see what's happening across the boards. So let's go ahead and turn off the first one. We'll turn off the second one. I have enough light in here that I can walk over there. So there's no lights on here that are not part of the regular setup. Um, I'll, I'll place the fill, the four by four back to where it was just so that you're getting a true sense of what happens when we start to flag that light with the floppy cutter. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a trip around all the way to the back of the room. It's the safest place for me to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and here I am. I'm going to open up that, uh, that floppy cutter. So I apologize in advance or while I'm doing it that you're hearing all of that Velcro. Uh, mute mics when you're opening up the floppy cutter, but I can't do that. I have a lot of things that I can do right now, but that's not one of them. All right, and we're gonna start to raise this up. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you like an AB on this too. I'm just opening this up here. And essentially, I'm gonna start to walk that in over there on that corner. And we should start to see that light slow down a little bit, right? So let me just go ahead and make a couple more adjustments here. Again, I apologize for the Foley. Um, let's go ahead and see that. And you can start to see when that starts to get set into place that we're slowing down that little side there, right? So now when I sit down, in this spot we're focused a little bit more on our talent and that is definitely slowed down a lot i'll open it up a little bit so you can see what that floppy is doing ta-da there it is closed come on kids it's a beautiful thing that's what you got so uh yeah I think there's uh, maybe one other modifier. Yeah, I've got one more I want to show you just to think about when you're thinking about Scrim Jim Cine, and then I'll pop over here and we'll do a Q&A. So let's go ahead and uh, switch back to our wide shot. Boom. I'll get rid of, uh, probably get rid of the fill right now, just so that you can see some stuff a little bit better. Slide that over here. I'll use that dirt again in a second. Blah, blah. All right, turn the house lights on. Do you have any questions here? Not yet. Get, get your questions ready. We're getting close to Q&A time. 
All right, so one more thing we're gonna take a look at, going back to the wide here. Uh, I've got another modifier, which um, is, ooh, that was bad. Uh, very, very useful. I have a six by six here. We could build this out to a, an eight by eight. Uh, and this is just a double net. I make this in a single and a double. I kind of call nets, um, you know, it's kind of like ND for the world. Uh, it just cuts down your light. So you've got singles and doubles here. And it's two pieces. The reason it's called a double is you have two single nets, one in front of the other. So they do separate from each other. And what you can do is if you're shooting in environments, let's say there was a window behind your talent, you could place this behind talent. You have to make sure it's far enough back that you don't have moray issues. But this is also fantastic with a couple of C-stands and clamps uh, and a lot of sandbags to tie it down outside to cut backgrounds on sunny days. So you can essentially ND the world, neutral density for the world. Uh, so I love nets, use them quite a lot. And uh, they are big, big problem solvers when it comes to controlling light that is too bright in environments. So let's see, now that I'm semi out of breath here, we can switch back to this view here. And um, there you go. That's kind of an introduction to Scrim Jim Cine, lighting control system from Westcott. Um, you know, I use this stuff. It's great. They're problem solvers for many, many different things when you're working on your projects. And they uh, they put together and they break down very quickly. And now I just open it up to any questions that people have. We're really in the chat here. Uh, if questions keep coming in, then I'll just keep answering them if I know the answer. And if they don't, then we'll start to wrap this thing up. But uh, again, this will be here on replay for people who did not get a chance to see it. I have no idea how many people are here on the live stream, but generally a lot of people will come back and watch this on the replay. So I apologize for the times that I am asking people for questions, but when you're doing a live stream, it's important to have that uh, interaction with the people who are here live. So what do we got? Uh, Julian, Lex, uh, Magda, James, Joe, anybody who's here that I've seen in the chat or anybody who has not uh, chimed in yet, are there any questions that you have about Scrim Jim Cine, uh, general lighting questions? I know that um, a couple of questions came in before the event. One of them is, when do you use tubes? I think I showed one example of that. Uh, another Example might be you're shooting in a bathroom or a small space, and uh, that might be a, a great place to use something like an ice light. And you can gel them and, and change their color temperature and put barn doors on them to control spill. And there's all kinds of ways to use tubes in production. Sometimes they're used in frame. A lot of music videos and uh, sci-fi and things like that use tubes because they become practical lights that you can use to actually light the set, but uh, you're seeing them. So tube-based lighting is actually great for that kind of stuff. Um, are there any, I'm just trying to think if the Adorama host could just post a couple more of those questions if they don't mind. I don't have them right in front of me. There were two others um, that were posed. I may have already covered it. Uh, one had to do with the cost of Scrim Gym, and that just depends on what tubes or kits or combinations of things that you're doing. So you can use the links for that. But I think there was a, another lighting question. So if you have a lighting question, then let me know. Um, Steven, thank you for saying it was awesome. Uh, and yes, I mean, you try um when you're doing these things question from david how do you know the best position to put your lighting oh that's the question so uh david if you're here or if you're watching this on replay that's a pretty loaded question mainly because it all depends on what style of lighting you're trying to create what kind of mood 
Um, you know, when you're shooting interviews, generally very soft lighting, wrap lighting, we, sh we looked at the side key, you know, kind of way of doing that. Um, I also don't always put my fill where I put it today. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do, you know, like a little bit of a, a sandwich where you're side keying and then you're side filling. And I think it's really beautiful because if you, if you really side key, then what happens is there's essentially darkness on the other side of the person's face and their body. And so if you walk in another, let's just say you used uh, two four by sixes. So you broke the, um, the book light kit apart and you use one side and you attached it with a clamp and you push light through it or you bounce light off of it back to talent. It's not as soft um, as a book light, but it's it, beautiful. And so let's say you're pushing through a half grade cloth right? With a, with a, a larger light source. Um, and then on the other side, what you do is you just bring in a four by four or the other four by six from the book light and you return that. Then what you do is you walk that in and there's, there's no shadows on the other side. So you're just grabbing that side key light and you're just filling in the other light. I think it's beautiful. It's using a lot of narrative, but there's just so many different combinations of what you're trying to do. If it's corporate, uh, documentary, then you discuss it ahead of time. Are you looking more for Rembrandt style lighting where you see like a little, you know, a little triangle on one side of the face and that's sort of a 45 and a 45, more butterfly where it's coming like from camera side and you see that little butterfly shadow. Clamshell lighting is very similar to butterfly, but you put a modifier down below uh, or another light or you're bouncing something off of there. Usually it's just the the butterfly lighting hitting another modifier and then filling in, which can be great. Um, and then there's, you know, there's back keying where you could use a huge modifier and just have most of the key coming from here. And then you have white or something returning that and you're filling from, from the front. Um, so there you go. Um, what about rooms with natural light? Would the net be good for modifying window light? Absolutely, Lex. And in fact, that's what I was alluding to. There's many times where, you know, you can go over and ND a window, but that's a lot of work. But if you had a six by six or especially an eight by eight, it has to be big enough depending on what your frame is and the size of your space. You could absolutely put that between your talent and the window and you could cut that down by essentially a stop or two. And it's great. Um, so it's great. Uh, can we clamp, this is from Chris, anywhere in the frame or it needs to be on the middle part only? Well, it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best in the middle of the frame. That's going to be the sturdiest. Uh, and, and generally, even when you are clamping from both sides, you want the center of the frame. It's going to be the sturdiest. You could go up a little bit or down a little bit. But obviously, if you're just clamping on one side, then the frame's going to, unless there's two you know, clamps. You you could, let's say, for instance, you wanted to clamp uh, a long uh, or wide frame. You could do it from the middle or maybe do two, two stands and then clamp it on either side. That would also be very, very sturdy. Um, here's another pre-submitted question that came in. Pablo is asking, do you prefer bicolor or daylight LEDs? Bicolor any day of the week. Flexibility, you know, otherwise you are trying to gel those and gelling LEDs can get funky just because of the technology. It can be done, but, uh, especially older LEDs. Um, but yeah, I'm not usually a fan of gelling LEDs. So I tend to lean towards bicolor. Uh, the other thing is that bicolor is so much more flexible in terms of coming into an environment and lighting because nowadays, you know, it used to be in olden times, historically back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth that when you walked into a space you probably were going to encounter one of two different types of lights you were going to encounter quartz halogen you know basically tungsten or 3200 kelvin ish color temperature lights or you were going to encounter fluorescence when those came to market um, and they got better and better. They had the same problems that we had with LEDs in the beginning. They skewed green. It's a phosphor, um, coating on a tube and the light source is hitting that and exciting it and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of like Charlie, wah, wah, wah. But, but basically flexibility. So now you come into a space and 
oh, some lights are daylight and some lights are tungsten or 3200 and some are in between and they're all over the place. And ideally you go in there and you shut off all the lights. But if you have to play with the practicals, meaning they have to mix with and do that, having a color meter could really help. There's some that are even used for smartphones, but there's some even better ones from companies like Sekonic. And you get a reading and you try to find where that middle ground is and you can dial that stuff in, um, you know, with, with bicolor LEDs. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that answers that question. And any other questions here? It's, uh, we still have some time and I'm happy to answer some more. And thank you very much, Lex, for that. I appreciate it. And hopefully people are and have learned some things with this session workshop event. I don't know what you call it. It's something, but it's, uh, definitely different for me because I'm very used to, I'm stalling here for more questions. If any come up, um, I'm really used to doing in-person hands-on workshops. I've even done stuff at Adorama in the past. And, you know, this is a very different way of doing education. It's not that it's going to be, you know, going away anytime soon. So, you know, even in an endemic, I think that having the ability to have a space like this and where I can show people things and break things down, um, is exciting to me. And this is just sort of an evolution of starting with one camera, going to two, and then figuring out how to do education in an environment like this. And I'm excited that um, it seems to be working. And uh, believe it or not, I'm in the country. I'm running this whole thing off of a, a Wi-Fi hotspot. That's a longer story in terms of how that's happening and having enough upload speed to be able to pull it off. But it is doable. And it can be done, um, which excites me very much. And that spring is here. So that's pretty cool. And that the weekend's coming up. And Memorial Day next weekend and barbecues and family and friends and all of those things that really matter to us in our lives. So there you go. Um, Chris, I am looking forward to creating more content for you. And I appreciate that. I do want to remind everybody that my website is thec47.com, T-H-E-C-47.com. And the YouTube channel is forward slash thec47, Twitter, thec47. And uh, yeah, come by on Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Almost every Wednesday at 3 p.m. I do a live stream. And it's a great place for you to show up and ask questions about pre-production and production and equipment and things like that. Um, if there are no more questions, I'm going to end this thing. And again, hopefully people will learn things on the replay. If you weren't here live for all the people who came here live and especially the people who interacted and asked questions. Um, awesome and really fun to do this. And it's still weird talking to a camera without seeing people, but I had the chat here that helps. And I've done a lot of live streams. So I'm going to end this thing. Uh, I've got a, a finish button here in Ecamm live, which is what I'm using to push this stuff out to the world. And then Adorama is handling the rest of that, uh, so that it shows up and it gets over to Vimeo. It's been a pleasure. And I'm going to go out into the yard now and build a fence for a garden. That's what I'm going to do. So enjoy your weekend and enjoy your summer. Uh, be safe. Enjoy your family and your friends. Eat good food. Enjoy life. And I'll see you soon.